Hi folks, I was almost buying a new microphone. I'm talking the classic, the iconic Rode VideoMic Pro. This is a very expensive microphone, but have also a very big issue. If you are in a silent place or you stop talking, the microphone adjusts by itself the sensibility and then you can have a very annoying background noise in all your videos. So today we are going to build a much cheaper microphone but with much more uh, functions so you can control it manually so i'm talking about this this is a classic zoom h1 and this i use this microphone from about six years now so i know it very well and even if you see it small have a very good quality and sensibility even at far distance so i bought another one so i have two zoom h1 today we are going to hack and modify only one so let's see what's inside and how to convert it into a Rode VideoMic Pro directional microphone let's start to take apart the audio recorder remove all the little screws and now we can open it and see what's inside we have the circuit and the most important components the two capacitor microphones but right now let's put these components away and instead take an aluminium tube with a marker I will mark 24 cm and with a grinder cut away the tube Let's take now instead a vibrating saw, replace the handle with a big screw. The idea is to secure this saw to the chuck of my grip box. So secure it very strong in place and my idea is to use it like a mill so that I can work on the aluminum tube very precisely. That's the reason why on the base of my grill press I install a vise that I can control very easily the movement. I can secure the aluminum tube in place and let's see how it works. Well, that's not so bad for such an improvised system. I spaced each cut about 3 or 4 millimeters, and I made them both sides. I only need to put inside this aluminum tube another one. This is a smaller tube, it's in brass, and it is 6 millimeters wide. It's very important, this component, because this helps to cancel out the waves. With a marker, I will mark a point a it on every centimeters, and now, we using my drill press, I can drill holes through the brass tube. It's very important to start with small drill bits and go up, and so we can start from one millimeter hole, and we go up to four and a half millimeter wide hole. This is very important so that the audio waves can go inside the aluminum tube and bounce on the brass tube and can collide each other, cancelling each other. So let's take now instead some foam and some scissors, cut away a small strip. I will use this like a small air filter, but also it's very important to keep perfectly centered cent in, the cent in the center the brass tube inside the aluminum tube. So I will take some uh, so and I can sew the foam in place. Twist the little string around it and, and the last point is to secure everything very firmly. I made this foam stopper on both sides of my brass tube. So here one on the top and one on the bottom. So now that you, you can understand what's my plan, I want to put this brass tube inside the aluminium one and as you can see is perfectly stays inside perfect. This is very important because it doesn't have to make noise. Now let's take the real microphone from the Zoom H1. I have to cut the base of this microphone because it isn't necessary so with some scissors I can cut it away and now I have to extend these copper cables. So 20 centimeters of copper cable is used to do this and now you can see that the microphone stays perfectly inside the aluminum tube. Maybe secure it inside with some hot glue so that doesn't make noise when we shake it. Let's take now a rubber plug and we can use it to stop the copper cable and also secure the back side of the microphone so that we will not catch sounds from behind. So glue it in place. Let's take now instead this. This is an earpiece for listening music. And I love this uh, little metal 
uh, thing on the top. I will use it, I will glue it here on the top of the microphone so that the uh, audio waves can go inside but dirt or bad little things can, cannot go inside the, the microphone. Let's take now the circuit and remove the other microphone. So the circuit now is all naked and we have to connect instead the new microphone with the 20 centimeters copper cable. So we can solder the cables right here. It's not we are not over, we, we only need to connect two more little copper cables so that we can have stereo audio. So on the left channel and on the right channel we can have audio. So we can now reclose the Zoom H1, putting in again the circuit inside. And I remember you that this you can do it, this process you can do it with any type of audio recorder. I choose the Zoom H1 because I know it very well and the audio quality is great. We can see now that works Let's very well. Let's talk about sucks, baby. So I will glue on the back side of the Zoom H1 using some epoxy glue, a little wood block that helps me to keep in place the microphone. But let's see for real what's the end result of this work. Now that I also bought a rod cable, this is an original one, I can connect the output of the microphone to the input of the camera and now I have the microphone. You can, tell, you can tell that the microphone is working because you can see here on the display of the microphone when I'm talking the microphone goes up, the input goes up, when I shut up they go down. So the microphone is working very, very well. Uh, now that the microphone is over, I also understand that you have three more benefits compared it to the very expensive rod one. The first one is that you can control the audio input of the microphone, the sensibility manually. Uh, here there are two buttons on the right and you can also control the output of the microphone here so this works like a preamp and the best thing that rod mics cannot do is that you can also record a backup file anytime every time you want it so for example now you can press record on the on the microphone on the zoom h1 and now i'm recording a backup file but i am also recording the video and audio on the camera itself so this is a very great thing now maybe you are wondering how it sounds like so let's compare very quickly the quality of the new microphone instead of the old onboard camera microphone. So let's see how it sounds like. And this finally is the audio test. Now the audio that you are hearing is the audio from above the camera. And this is the Zoom H1 with a directional microphone. It's also raining, so I'm trying to do the things pretty fast. Now let's change instead the microphone. Audio that you are hearing right now is the onboard camera mic from my Nikon. I'm pretty sure that the quality improved when I plug in. So please let me know in the comments below if you think that the quality audio is improved. What I can do better, now I bought on eBay a sponge to put on top of the microphone and also uh, I don't need to put some absorbing springs because I, always will, I will always use the camera on the tripod so I don't shake it. So I leave you with my two previous projects and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. Ciao ciao! Se secondo voi la qualità audio è aumentata, quindi sono sicuro che la qualità audio fa cagare, rimetto su. Se secondo voi la qualità audio è aumentata, quindi sono sicuro che la qualità audio fa cagare, rimetto su. Se secondo voi la qualità audio è aumentata.